let's understand the second J2EE design pattern named front controller. The preceder of front controller design pattern was MVC design pattern. In the model 2 architecture of the MVC design pattern, we discussed serverless act as controllers. As the application grows, the number of servlets present in the application also increases. As a result, redundancy is caused among various common functionalities present within various servlets. Some of the common functionalities which are present across the servlets are authentication, authorization, managing views and other common security services. The front control design pattern is used to solve this problem. The clients now interact with only one controller that is the front controller. All the common functionalities which were earlier present in individual servlets are now put inside front controller. Whenever the client interacts with the front controller, the front controller will do the common functionalities and then forward the request to the respective controllers who will then give response to the client's request. The controller can himself give response or can give response in the form of a view that is JSP page. Following are the two strategies supported by front controller design pattern. The first strategy is known as serverless strategy while the second one is known as JSP strategy. In the case of serverless strategy, servlets acts as a front controller. While in the case of JSP strategy, JSP acts as a controller. The serverless strategy is more preferred since servlets mainly act as controllers which is their role. While the JSP strategy is less preferred since JSP mainly deals with view or presentation. Following are the implementation details of servlet front controller strategy. In this, we first create a servlet which behaves like front controller. Next, we create an URL which should be unique for the front controller servlet. This URL is then mapped within the web.xml to the front controller servlet. Inside the servlet, we perform the common functionalities and then forward the request to the respective controllers or views. While forwarding the request, care to be taken that we Remove the unique identification of the URL which was present for the front controller servlet. Looks bit difficult. We will make it easy by showing an example. We are going to consider a simple login application in which the user enters a username and password. If this username and password is valid user is taken to the next page else is taken to the error page since this application is highly sensitive and in order to avoid any security infringements the username and password are validated in each of the controller we will design our solution using the front controller design pattern to ensure a good design solution. The user details of this login application are stored within the MVC table which contains username, password and name. Shown is the simple login.html page which contains a form within which we have two input fields one as text and other as password for username and password respectively. We have submit and reset buttons for the same. On clicking the submit button, user will be taken to the action name 
admin slash web dot jsp shown is the web dot xml for the given application inside this xml we map the url which contains the word admin to the front controller servlet and the front controller servlet is mapped to the class which is present within the package com.qspon.servlets and is named front controller servlet the admin acts as a unique identification for our front controller servlet any url which contains admin will be forwarded to the front controller servlet shown is the front controller servlet class inside the process request method of this class which is invoked by do get and do post methods we first get the session and search within the session for a bean named user bean if the value of this user bean is null then we get the username and password from the request and create a new bean the bean is defined within the com.qspon.bean package which contains a string username and password with an overloaded constructor and as setters and getters for the same once we have created this bean the next job is to validate whether the user credentials are valid or not to do so we make use of the login model using which we get a map which contains username as the key and password as the value the get data creates a connection and gets data from the mvc table by using jdbc connections this connections and model is same as the one we consider in the mvc example next we have a boolean variable named is valid which checks if the username and password are present within the map if the value of is valid is false this indicates the user is not a valid user in which case we set the next page as error.jsp else we get the request uri which was sent from the action and by using this we remove the admin present within the url this is a very important step if we don't remove admin from the url then this request will again be forwarded to the front controller servlet and will go on till infinite loop hence it is very important to maintain in the maintain the entire url by removing the admin void from it after doing this we get the request dispatcher object and forward the same by using request and response objects the request dispatcher object uses the next page which will be error if the users are invalid or the actual url which is sent by the application after removing the admin word from it let's run the program to see the working model of the application rama represents a valid user which is present in our database hence by entering the username as rama and password again as rama and on submitting the form we go to the page welcome.jsp internally on clicking the submit button the control is given to the front controller servlet which performs the validation 
and since the validation is a success the page is forwarded to welcome.jsp page on the other hand if we enter wrong credentials and click on the submit button we will be taken to the error page saying that we are not a valid user again control goes to the front controller servlet which performs validation and on seeing the validation fail we are forwarded to the error page thus we have seen how to design an application by using front controller servlet rehydrating once again through the implementation steps of the servlet front control strategy we first create a servlet which behaves like front controller we did the same in the application by defining a servlet name front controller servlet next we map the url to the front controller servlet in the web.xml by giving a unique identification for the front controller servlet we did the same in our application by mapping the url containing admin word to the front controller servlet inside the servlet we perform the common functionality and then forward the request to the respective controllers or view while forwarding care to be taken to remove the unique identification in the url for front controller we did the same by removing the admin word from the url and forwarded it to the respective jsps based upon the validation this is what is known as front controller design pattern the famous structs 1.x framework is an example of front controller design pattern in structs 1.x we make use of action servlet which acts as a front controller all the request are forwarded to the action servlet which then performs the common functionalities and forwards the request to the respective individual controllers by using the mapping found within the struts config.xml let's see the next design pattern which is known as filter dispatcher design pattern